Hi, my name is Alessandro Gangelosi and that's a video tutorial coming from cgcookie.com for Max Cookie. This time I'd like to start some introduction videos about uh, another plugin able to do 3D Air in 3ds Max and I'm talking about Ornatrix. Ornatrix is a really powerful plugin to create a uh, uh, fur, hair and also grass everything can be related to a few plugin. You see that's the uh, uh, developer uh, web page you can download also uh, a demo version from there. Actually uh, we have the version 1.8 so you can download it and you can uh, play with it a little bit. It is a complete solution for, uh, for air uh, because it has all the uh, tools to create the air, to groom the hail, to style and to uh, calculate also the dynamic. It is completely uh, compatible with 3ds Max tools and with a scanline render, uh, mental ray, V-ray and final render so you, you can render it uh, with no problem. With uh, V-Ray we have also uh, some shaders inside the ladders uh, V-Ray uh, version that can be used to render directly using V-Ray uh, internal feature. So uh, let's see just a really fast introduction to see uh, what we have when we install Ornetrix. You see that there I have a new menu with just two voice and uh, we can just uh, create a really simple scene, a plane and a sphere, so nothing so complex and there, let's do it a little bit bigger and this one will stay higher okay, let's say that our resolution for rendering is the, uh, the one we use always and let's go for uh, to use this scan line render. Okay, so we are ready. Uh, how we can play with uh, with the rendering there? Um, let's set the show so free. Okay. The first thing you can do is to select the objects you like to add or matrix, and you can go there or matrix add a to selection, and you see that actually we have some modifiers set uh, and added to the surface we have the our matrix guide from surface because the guide are the main guide the spline that will create the air and the guides are based on the surface and there we have all the parameters relatives to uh, how to attach the guide and to follow uh, the surface then we have the ornatrix edit guide and it will give us the possibility to edit the guides directly and we'll see how and then we have the Ornetic Sayer from guides and this, uh, this modifier gives us the possibility to create air starting from the guides we are using there so uh, how it works uh, you see it's really simple because we have there the air and we are able to render it with no problem but uh, if we go there to render, let's try. You see that it is preparing the scene, and you see that we have nothing there. One thing we can do is to go there, set up fast retracer, and you see that we have something inside the render. Obviously, uh, the quality is really low, but we can go inside there, the environment. And you see that we have something, the Ornetrix Air retrace fast. So that's one way to render. And you see that we have a lot of options. And we have information about which air objects we have to use, how to set up the, the air. We can control with the thickness map. We have the, the, the light from the scene and we can exclude it and you see there we have the uh, partition settings for the retracer and there we have some information about the shadows and other information there about the sampling and uh, etc etc so we have a lot of uh, interesting uh, things there uh, we can add a light 
let's say to use a target spot okay and uh, let's do it a little bit bigger and let's see what happen if we render now okay you see that we have the air we can set to on the shadows and let's see what happen and you see that we have the shadows for the uh, the sphere there we can go there inside the shadows and you see that now we have some new uh, shadows plugin and I'm talking about the Ornetrix Air Shadows, the Ornetrix Deep Shadow Maps and the Ornetrix Retrace Shadows. Let's see what happened and uh, just to, to see that we can calculate, you see, now we have the shadows there and uh, we can do the same using the depth, the deep shadows, but you see that it's more precise and we have also the retraced shadows and we have obviously to set later how to use it uh, for the moment we can stay with the uh, Ornetrix deep shadows and we'll see uh, how to use it in uh, some future tutorial now it's just to understand how to play with it uh, let's play a little bit with lighting uh, uh, so I put another light inside the scene there And this one can be just a fill light, something like that. Let's see what happens. It is really, really too much. And let's say that we have no specularity. Okay. So that's actually our setup. So uh, actually we have no or uh, nothing special inside the scene, but you see that we can render it. We can also understand how much powerful tools we have. You see that inside the modifier now we have a tons of modifiers for our Netflix. We have the dynamics, but we have also a lot of parameters to work on the on the um, on the guides and to style the hair. And we have obviously also uh, some shaders there. We can, for example, use a standard shader like uh, like this one, and then you see that we have the new shading system. This one is the fastest one, the cheap. That's the expensive. That's slower, and then we have the transitions. So we have different possibility. We can, for example, assign. Uh, let's do the expensive to this one. Let's see what happened. Okay, you see that we have the the shader. Obviously, uh, the quality is really low because we are not using uh, good parameters to render it. Um, let's see, just with this configuration what we can do and for example there you see that we have some tools and you see that for example I have the possibility to select the guides so that's uh, this one this uh, give us the idea that I can control the the guides to to manage it and to uh, to manipulate you see that I can also uh, select the uh, directly the strands and they have also the brush and the brush is useful because you see uh, we can style directly uh, the uh, the guide so I can give a fast rough uh, configuration and style and I have the possibility to for example rotate the air you see and I have the possibility to scale my air and I have the possibility to cut you see the air for example there obviously we can scale the brush so I can cut you see in this way and that's really really powerful and I have to grow and shrink 
so you see I can control directly the the growing just for some air and we have for example other possibility to pick the air and to uh, uh, we can say uh, grab and collect air and that's really interesting so for example now you see the air will be created based on the guide I modified and if I go to render we have obviously this strange look let's uh, let's go there and you see that we have for example the possibility to to see less or more fewer inside the viewport we have a lot of tools there to control we have how many for example a we have inside the render and there for example we have uh, 10,000 So uh, we we can go, for example, just a moment there, and you see that there we have to control on the scale of the air. So, for example, we can say and ask to have uh, you see less scaled air to have a better quality and render again and you see that it is better than before so obviously uh, the quality is really low actually because we are not working to uh, to have a good quality in rendering and we are doing nothing there to control the uh, the various parameters but we have for example the possibility you see to have the render settings directly there too with a modifier so uh, we have uh, a really interesting way to control all the uh, the parameters. Uh, there, for example, you see we have the possibility to have more detail. Let's go near the air. More detail, and for example, that's in viewport, and that's in rendering. So, for example, now we have. 50 for rendering and obviously the curve will be more precise so let's say to use the render value obviously it's uh, a little bit slower than before because it is using a, a more precise curve but you see that now the curves are better than before really really better so uh, we have a lot of control and we have different ways to control the air quality and the air rendering and all the other uh, parameters so we can do really really uh, good things uh, let's say for example that there we like to see more air and you see that our uh, screen will be more similar to the final rendering and then for example I can go there and let's say maybe we can use this one and you see that there we have the possibility to control the curling so we can create curvy or curly hair and you see that we have a lot of parameters to create it for example we can try in this way and let's say maybe a little bit less power and we can see how it will uh, be changed inside rendering as you see the control we have in rendering is amazing now we have curvy uh, hair done really in a few uh, seconds so let's say that this one is not renderable and uh, let's go for example in this point of view there to see just how it works in different ways let's wait and you see obviously the stylish is really really bad but the quality is really nice and we've done nothing so special because I 
just made tests to play with the hair with uh, not so uh, interesting things uh, to play with so we can set to off you see that we have complete control over all the feature because we are talking about uh, viewport feature there and again we can say that we like to have less air in the viewport okay so uh, this was just an introduction to Ornetrix and soon we'll work on some tutorial to see all the features we have uh, there in this beautiful plugin and we'll see how to play with it to create more complex uh, uh, situation so for the moment that's all and I hope to see you back on Max Cookie to check for new tutorial coming from cgcookie.com bye